Lynn Ruan. Thank you, Cahirlock. Um, leader, when I was driving in this morning, I was listening to a podcast by two inner city lads. Um, and I listened to the podcast, not because I was unfamiliar with the story, I've, I've, I was very familiar with it, but I was interested just to hear an update on it. And it was in relation to Terence Wheelock and the Wheelock family. And the family have um, called again for an independent review into Terence's debt. I first became aware of the Wheelock family actually when they lived in my own estate before they moved into the inner city many years ago when we were children. And then later on, I became good friends with Terence's brother, um, Lar, who later died um, just a couple of years ago, but obviously died without seeing what he felt was real justice for his younger brother, who got arrested for something that he didn't do and then he was never seen awake again and died after a couple of months after being in a coma. But when I was listening to this and um, remembering the reasons and the discrepancies in that case as to why an independent review is needed, it also got me thinking about the wider issue of policing, um, even all these years on, but especially for me when I was growing up. And it's an issue I've avoided time and time and time again. And today I really try to, for the last two hours, think, why am I avoiding this subject? Why am I avoiding talking about police violence? It's not just the use of force and restraint in a necessary way, but the use of real, real violence against people um, in communities that are over-policed. And to be honest, what I've come to in the short space of the morning of thinking about why I don't speak about it is because in many of the situations when I have tried to speak about it, I am met with a love fest of all the things the guards are great at and guards are good at and isn't it great I had this experience with this guard and this and it's like it completely dismisses the experiences of communities that are over-policed and actually don't have that same luxury of that experience. So then we go silent. One of my most extreme uh, memories as a child, as a 12 year old, was, was a band guard chasing one of the young men in my estate. And I can only describe the scene as that scene in American History X, when that lad went in this, and if you've, any of you have watched the film, you'll know the scene I'm talking about, and it is violent. And I remember as a young girl watching that scene and what the guards did to that young lad. And I was, I was only a child, I was only about 10. When I was writing my book, I went back to that man and I said, can you tell me if I remember this correctly? Because sometimes these memories are so extreme, I go, it can't, be, it can't have happened like that. And, and it has. And then I would have experienced violence myself at the hands of the guards. And nobody's positive experience with authority should ever negate the negative experience from other people. They can both exist within the same institution, in the same space, and we need to be able to talk about it. So today, um, leader, I'm asking for a debate on policing, but not in its broadest sense, because that's when the negative experiences are flushed down. But if we can have a real conversation about the unnecessary use of violence within the police force, um, I would very much appreciate that. Thank you.